what it means to be a Christian. And what I'm going to do is I, 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 I want you to stop and think for a minute. I, I, you don't have to, if you don't feel like expressing anything or talking anything, just say I'll pass or whatever and come back to me in a second or something. But I just want, we want to ask the group, what does it mean to you to be a Christian? Go ahead, Tim. Yeah, I, I learned what it meant. Uh, I didn't know at first when I first got saved because mm-hmm. I just it was religion in me. Yeah, and I was religion. judging everybody, and I was struggling so bad because of the religion. Mm-hmm. And I learned to be a Christian is God has made you who you are for certain reasons, and you're to be the best you can be for Jesus. Huh? Right. And yeah. that's to be a, the best that you can be. There's, yeah. You know, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to go through times that you get through this world a lot better if you're a Christian trying to do the best you can do. Right. Right. Amen. Anyone else? Yeah, I have been learning. I, you know, I look at it from this perspective. It's, it's to have an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. And I heard one person say one time that the same discipleship that the disciples had with Jesus when they were here on the earth we can have with the Holy Spirit and I look at it at myself as a student of Rabbi Jesus and yes. where through the Holy Spirit he can teach me with it life would be like the life lessons and he can teach me how to live like him and that's how I look at being a Christian Amen Anybody else? I uh, learned to be a Christian early in life because I was raised in a Baptist church. Right. But since I've come here, I've learned a lot, lot more. Right. You know. And I just feel like I'd rather be in a relationship with Jesus than, you know, I just feel better inside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. And on the... Radio the other day, well, it was last week. I heard uh, a pastor say there's three types of Christians. He says, Number one Christian is a Christian that makes things happen, Mm -hmm. number two Christian is a Christian that sits back and just watch things happen, Mm -hmm. and then number three Christian is one that don't even know when anything happens, right? You know. And he says, what kind of Christian are you? Right. And it really got me thinking. It's like, that really hit home. It's like, right. you know, you would want to be the number one. You right, know? right. But a lot of people, they just, I don't know, they just don't think of it that way. Yeah. You know? Anybody else? I'll add something. Is that recording now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you got your Bibles, go to Acts, the 11th chapter. And I've kind of taught on this stuff before, but I think it's worth repeating some of this stuff is. 11th chapter? Yeah, Acts 11, 26. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a prayer. I'm going to open this up with prayer. Dear Father, first of all, I want to thank you, dear God. I want to thank you for your anointing. I want to thank you for your blessing. I want to thank you for your hand upon each and every one of us, oh God. And Lord, you're just going to supernaturally... Teach us, oh God. You're going to, the Holy Spirit, you're our teacher. And we ask that in the name of Jesus, Father, let's let the Holy Spirit come into our, our hearts and our minds and, and teach us and lead us and guide us and bring to our remembrance all things, oh God, that you said, Father. And Lord, I ask for this blessing, Lord, and I, I, I pray this blessing upon your people in the name of Jesus. In Acts 11 26, and it says, it's talking about uh, Barnabas, and it said he found him, and talking about Saul, uh, the apostle, which was Paul, they brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that the whole year they were assembled themselves, uh, assembled themselves with the church and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Christians. Christians is, I guess the the greatest illustration I can give is to be Christ-like. Now, 
I've seen a lot of people, churches and myself included, that's been very much unlike Christ. Okay? <clears throat> but, but, that, that, that doesn't mean that I quit and give up because I'm not like Christ. Right. You right. see what I'm saying? And, and that's where I think the teaching, and I think that's where I think the reading, and that's where I think the praying and the meditating and the fellowship with yeah. God's people is what helps us become uh, mature as Christians. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? See, they, 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 they didn't, uh, when 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 people were getting saved, they didn't call them uh, 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 preaching them Jesus people. They didn't call them Baptists. They didn't call them Pentecostal. They called them Christians, and, or they didn't call them Catholics. I mean, there, there are so many different names out there. There's so many different denominations. I mean, it just makes your head go. It makes your head spin. Yeah. And you yeah. think you, you know you think. Uh, God wants us, and I really believe this, and I know this is, it, it simplifies things, but it's, I, I think we need to keep it simple, is I think God wants us to get back to our basics, come to know Christ, come to renew that fellowship and that relationship with him, if we, if we haven't already done it, and, 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 and draw closer to him and, and, and try to be as he is in the earth, uh, you know, I know Pastor Judy. Now, Pastor Judy preaches, uh, uh, teaches an advanced course. Right. I'm kind of like the 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 unadvanced course, where well, she teaches the advanced course, and she teaches really things about walking like Jesus walked. Okay, but I'm talking about some of the more simple stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, like a laying out of hands. Okay, that the, how many have laid people hands on people to pray for? Them? Yeah, yeah, everybody has. And, and so so that's what I'm saying. And we just got to do, and I tell you, there's so many people in this world that need Christ that are hurting. I mean, I met a lot of people this week, this weekend down in Lawton. Uh, they were just a, there were a lot of good people. A lot of them weren't saved, but they were just good people. And I thought, you know, God, is there somehow that they can see you in me in somehow, some way, you know what I'm saying? Or seek God in some of us that are Christians. Right. You see what I'm saying? Because, I mean, this ain't all about you or all about me. Right. It's all about God's kingdom mm -hmm. and right. God's people. And anyway, so uh, I want you to go with me to Ezekiel, uh, and we're gonna we're gonna go through a, a couple of scriptures. Ezekiel thirty six, and it's uh, and it's an Old Testament scripture, verse twenty five. Yeah, go ahead. You know, I and I sound like a broken record in saying this, but one of the things that's really helped me the most is praying in the spirit. Uh huh. I mean, that's really like. When I found out that God, as you pray in the Spirit, you can say, Lord, help me, to, you know, Lord, renew my mind as I pray in the Spirit. And things just drop off of you when you right. just mm -hmm. keep that fellowship. You have your Spirit praying with the Holy Spirit, and you just keep that fellowship like that. Right. You know, one of the things I'm trying to teach us here is I'm going to share some scriptures with you, and it will let, let us know where we're at in Christ, mm -hmm. where we need to improve, you know, what, what, what we need to try to do better. Uh, be, because let me tell you something. God is coming back for his bride. And she's going to be holy. She's going to be without spot. She's going to be without wrinkle. Amen. Amen. Uh, Ezekiel 36, 25 says, Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I will cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. I will take away that stony heart out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and, and keep my judgments and do them. You know, God is literally going to put his spirit within us. Mm-hmm. So that we walk in his statues. What's his statues? His statues are his written laws. Mm -hmm. 
okay? To walk in his statutes and see. So, so people need to understand we're not in this by ourselves. Because if, it, if I, I, cause I can't walk this by myself. I've tried too many times. Yes, my wife. I've tried too many times to walk this on my own. And, and I always stumble and fall and crash and burn. And I just want to tell you that only with an intimate, and, and I've, Peyton has taught me a lot of this by, by, by the fellowship her and I have, it's only by the intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit through the Word of God right. that, that, that you're going you're gonna to learn this stuff. Because, see, Jesus said, i got to go away. But if I go away, I'm going to send you a comforter, mm -hmm. a teacher, and it's going to teach you all things. And we need to learn some things. Uh, the, the church does. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. Go with me to uh, 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 John, the third chapter. Regular John. Yeah, Gospel John, John three. Okay, John three. I'm gonna start in. Uh, Verse 5. Now, these are pretty common scriptures, but I kind of gives me the foundation and the base for what we're talking about. And Jesus answered, John 3, 5, Gospel of John, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now, see, that scripture I read to you was an Old Testament scripture, but the one right before this in Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. And see, Nicodemus was a Pharisee, so he was a a, 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 a a teacher of the law. Right. But Nicodemus was clueless to what Jesus was talking about. He says, uh, 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 he says, very, very, I say to you, except a man is born again of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Uh, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said you must be born again. See, see, he, he was telling John that, but John didn't understand that. But that's where God said he's going to, and, and one time Tim testified when we was over the other church, where he said he was one day in the church, and we was, they was doing worship. And he said he's seen a heart of stone, a vision of a heart of stone, Right. And he said, a hand come out of heaven and grabbed the stone and crushed it. And when he opened the stone, his hand again, it was a heart of flesh. Mm -hmm. And see, that's where when we're born again and when we ask Jesus Christ into our heart and into our life, God comes in and the, and the Holy Spirit changes us. We become, uh, the Bible says we become a new creature. Okay, or born again. Amen. Okay, go with me to uh, uh, Luke. And I'll show you sometime where maybe some of us have problems. But uh, I think that uh, with God, we're going to get through them. Okay, Luke uh, chapter 13. Uh, and I'm going to start in uh, uh, verse 1. And they were present at the season... Uh, some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were uh, sinners above all uh, Galileans because they suffered so much? Verse 3, I tell you, nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. In, in, in other words, what Jesus they was thinking, well, these Galileans, the people were thinking these Galileans must be some really evil people right. for, for God to let this happen to them. And Jesus was telling them, hey, no, no, God didn't let that happen to them. That stuff just happens. And, 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 and except that you repent, you shall likewise perish. Now, now what is, is the word repent mean? To, uh, anyone got a, a definition of what they think repent means? Put on Christ's mind. About yeah. a specific Put on Christ's mind. That's one interpretation. Anyone else? Do your first works over. 
Yeah, you know, that's a, that's a, a, that's one. And you know, start over and and learn from what your mistakes have been. Yeah, that's good. That's good. See, re and repent means to change. Mm -hmm. It really means what it means is to change your mind. Okay, now does that mean that we're going to be perfect once we repent and accept Christ into our life and say, I'm going to live for Christ? Mm -hmm. No, we're not going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. We're going to mess up a lot and make a lot of mistakes. But, but by us continually fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit and with each other and right. reading the Word and going to church and serving God and seeking after God, God will show us what way please Him and what ways don't please him. Amen? Amen. Okay. Uh, 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 hang on a second. Uh, re receiving Christ uh, means being in him. And, and I'm going to go to 2 Corinthians. Everyone's real familiar with this. I quote the scripture a lot. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. But I want to I wanna emphasize something in it. It says in... 2 Corinthians 5 17 it says therefore if any man be in Christ mm -hmm. in Christ what does in Christ mean to you you're abiding in the vine you're, you're receiving fruit from him mm -hmm. who is the vine yeah you, you, you're like a piece of the fruit on the vine yeah and you're receiving nourishment and, 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 and things from him. Okay, yeah, that, that, that's a, uh, 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 but therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things have become new. Now, let me ask you, anyone in here want to tell me one thing that they, that, that really helped them change when they first came to Christ and asked God into their life, did, did you sense a change in you in some way or did you see a change or, or, or was there a big change in you? Sure. Was there? Yeah. What kind of change? Well, just, you just want to do better. Yeah. Yeah. You want to be, you know, you want to not do this, you know, bad things like sin and stuff like that. Right. You know, you're turning away from the sin. Right. And learning, you know, what it is to be a Christian. Yeah. Anyone else? I think I think that my, as you know, born again experience seems to have came when I got the baptism in the Holy Spirit because right. that was one. I mean, like I would get transformed a little here and a little there and a little there, but it was like I almost immediately it was like when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, it's like phew, just. The fire of His Holiness just came in, yeah. and and just started helping me. I was able to communicate more effectively with Him and things like that. Right. And He was praying His will through me, you know, just you know through that prayer language. Right, right. And so I was able to transform a lot quicker. Right. You know, one of the things that I had in me was I had a lot of uh, resentment. I had a lot of anger. I had a lot of hate in my heart for just the world, mm -hmm. just God and the world, my parents. I just had all this stuff going in and off through my mind. But I can remember when I asked Christ to come into my heart and to change me, I just remember this great sense of peace right. that came over me. I mean, it was like, wow. And And, and I think it was... I used to think that, you know, how could God love somebody like me, you know? Uh, I mean, I probably wasn't any worse than my friends were, but I, I was raised a Catholic, and I knew Christ as a child. But then when I got away from that, uh, I become a, a, a heathen, and then I become a real, real heathen. Uh, and, and, and then, but after all that, God still forgave me. Mm -hmm. And I could, I mean, it was just like I couldn't believe it that, 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 that he had such great love and such great mercy for us. And, and, and I think once people really understand that and really perceive that, I think it'll draw a lot of people more close to him because I know a lot, there's a lot of people that think that for whatever reason, because of themselves or whatever, that God can't save them. They think it's that. like 
Yeah, because, you know, Go I've ahead. done things that's kind of like unforgiving, you know, to them. You, 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 you know, I used to think that no matter how good it sounded, no matter how great it was, I always thought, for well, some reason, I'm still going to end up in hell. I used to think that a lot. Oh, yeah. And the Lord got after me about that. And he says, hey, he said, that's the same thing the children of Israel would do in the wilderness. He goes, you can't do that. You cannot believe that. You cannot think that uh, because you start putting that stuff out of your mind because it's not true. True. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Peggy. You going to say something? Yeah, I didn't want to spoil anything for Grandma, but I've been watching The Chosen, and there's a scene that they portray as, uh, they portray, um, it's just, using creativity but Mary Magdalene going back to like the old lifestyle and then when she when the disciples come to get her uh, she felt real ashamed she said I can't face him she said I you know he fixed me once but I'm broken again and then when she went before Jesus he said did you think he just said this in love he said did you think that you will never that once I redeemed you that you will never sin again he said no he, you know, he said, what good is, redemp- is is your redemption if you can lose it in a day? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, it, okay. Uh, one of the things, and uh, let's go to uh, Ephesians, the fourth chapter. And I'm going I'm to share some things. And, 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 and I, I think if we look at these things, Ephesians 4, uh, starting verse, verse 17. I think when we look at some of this stuff, uh, what God's promised us is a new life. Right. You know, and, and, and like I was telling you earlier, when Christ come into my heart, uh, when, when Glenn and I was together and stuff like that, and, and I think God put her in my life to help me come to Christ because she had a Christian background. And uh, and and when that when that happened, I mean, I could not believe the change in me, the way I felt. Mm-hmm. And then as I started reading the Bible, God started adding to that. Really? Yeah, well, things to help me, things to, to, to show me the way. And uh, <clears throat> Ephesians 4.17 says, uh, This I say and testify in the Lord that you henceforth Walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds. What is? What do you think it means by walking in the vanity of your mind? You you let your mind rule your rule you instead of you rule the mind, and you and you uh, cater to the flesh. Yeah, the vanity. That's what, yeah, exactly. that's what I was thinking. You kind of like to let your flesh take over. Yeah, yeah. The vanity of your mind. It says. Uh, verse 18, having the under, uh, understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. See, it's our heart. It's our heart. Who who being uh, past feelings, giving themselves over unto lasciviousness, which is lust, to work all uncleanliness and greediness. Uh, verse <laughs> 20 of uh, Ephesians 4 says, but you have not so learned Christ. Now, now listen to what it says in verse 21. If so be that you heard him. I think what's happened to a lot of Christians is they haven't really heard Christ. They've heard the preacher. They've heard, they, they've heard somebody talk to them. They've heard their friends. But a lot of them hasn't really heard Christ. Okay, and it says, uh, if so be that you've heard him and been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. See, God wants to teach us his ways. Okay, and you know, the law, the, 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 the law is summed up in two commandments. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Right. To love fulfills the entire law, all the law, okay? It says uh, uh, in verse 22, but you have put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, 
That former conversation he's talking about there means conduct. The former conduct, that old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, verse 24, and that you put on the new man. Who puts on the new man? We do. I do. Yeah. See, we put off the old man, we put on the new man. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Peyton. Yeah, one of the things, uh, I would actually encourage you all to do communion. One of the things I learned, I was listening to Pastor Vlad one time, and he said, consider yourself dead. He was re- re- about Romans, and he said, <laughs> What you do is you look back. You don't you don't wait until you you die to get transformation, but you look back to the cross and you say, "Lord, I consider myself crucified with you, and I put on your nature." Amen. Yeah, amen. It says uh, uh, you put off the, the 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 conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful laws. And verse twenty three says, "And be renewed in the spirit of your mind." Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Right. It says, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteous and true holiness. I put on the new man. How do I know what, uh, what the new man's like? I read the word of God, and I let God lead me and teach me. I go to Sunday school. I go to church. I, I fellowship with Christian people, and I learn God's way. That's the only way you can do it. A lot of people, you know, I feel bad for a lot of people. There's a lot of people that's going to hear this broadcast that don't go to no churches or nothing like that. If you're not in church and you're not fellowship with other Christians, uh, uh, it, it, you you make it many times harder on yourself than it has to be. Because you have no fellowship. You have no one there to pray for you. You have no one there to help you. You have no one there to bounce things off of you. You have no one there to reprove you sometimes when we need reproved. You see what I'm saying? And, and so, uh, but, but okay, let's go on here. Let, let, let me get on over here. Uh, we must resemble Christ. Go to First Peter 2.21. First Peter two twenty one. Uh, for even unto, uh, for even here unto were you called, be Christ, cause Christ also suffered for us, leaving us example, that we should follow in his steps. Right. You know, a lot of Christians, I think. Uh, 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 are, are naive to think that well, if they're a Christian, then they'll, they'll never suffer. Yeah, we you you suffer you we suffer uh, all the time. We, yeah. you know what I'm saying. I mean, you know, uh, some days when I get up in the morning, I really suffer. <laughs> but 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 anyway, uh, this is our calling as Christians. We emulate Christ. Emulate means to imitate. Mm-hmm. to imitate Christ. You see, and I think that, you know, and I see, let me tell you something, and I really believe this, and I mean, I really mean this. I see Christ in everyone in here. I've seen you emulate Christ many times. Amen? And 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 and, and then as we get around others, you may not even notice it, but they notice. They notice. Let me tell you, I, I used to work at GM and when I was out there, I, I'd, I'd say something bad. I'd say a bad word or something like that. And I'd be in a room full of people. And that whole room would stop. Mm-hmm. And they would all get quiet. The whole room would quiet. You'd hear a pin drop. And they'd all look at me. And I'd go, sorry, sorry. But I'm just saying, you got to realize that people look at you. And you don't know how important that is, and, and 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 what they want to they want to see if the Christ you talk about is real. That's what they're looking for is the, to make sure the Christ you talk about is real. Okay, let me go on with a couple more scriptures, and then we'll get ready to close. Uh, uh, we should look for the positive and good, be kind, 
doing comp- uh, uh, being compassionate and understanding. Uh, go to Colossians, uh, the second chapter, third chapter, I'm sorry. Colossians 3, verse uh, 12. 12? Yeah, Colossians 3, 12. I'm going to read on down through about 14. It says, put on therefore, there's that word again, put on. Who puts it on? We We do. do. Mm -hmm. Put on therefore the elect, as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. You know those people in church that have enemies in the church and they don't even forgive them. Sure. That's, that's terrible. That's terrible. Forgiving one another. If any man has a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so do ye also. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Charity is put on, is I got to put on love. Yep. Go ahead, baby. Yeah, I, would, I, I felt like the Lord wanted me to say this. I want to encourage every person. The scripture that came to mind was pray for those who persecute you. Pray for your enemies. Yes. Love your enemies. Yes, amen. Let, let, let me go on. Uh, uh, I'm going to do a couple more scriptures. I want to go to, uh, uh, we must represent Christ. Go to Acts 1 and uh, verse 8. It's a real familiar passage of scripture. And the reason I quote this scripture a lot is I want it to to get a hold of us. Mm-hmm. It says, verse uh, 8 of, of Acts 1, it says, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and the uttermost part of the earth. And here's what that's saying. It says, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witnesses to me both in Oklahoma City, in the state of Oklahoma, in the county of Oklahoma, in the state of Oklahoma, and on the other most part of the earth. That's what it's That's saying. That's verse 8? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm That's okay. paraphrasing. I just wanted to make sure I wrote it down. Yeah, yeah. But you shall receive power. And, and, and you know, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit will give you the boldness to speak out about the things of God. Right. It's called authority. Yes. Authority. Go ahead, sister. Go ahead. <clears throat> well, that's what that means. Power means authority. Yeah, yeah. In God's, in God's words. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Uh, okay, go with me to a uh, uh, couple more scriptures. And I'm going to go to Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah 43. Verse 10. Yeah. Now, once you listen, this is God speaking. Isaiah forty three ten says, "You are my witness," saith the Lord. He's talking to us. Okay. And my servant, whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am He. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. That's God speaking. There's no God formed other than him, and there'll be none after him, just him, okay? Uh, It says, verse 11, I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. And let me say this, God's will, God's plan, God's purpose and he, he said it really in John, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Right. Yeah. Now listen, to whosoever, whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have eternal life. And that's, that's our job, our prayer, our work, everything that we do 
is to, to, to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ in the lives of people. And the, some of the best ways you can do it is by how we live our lives around other people. Mm -hmm. All right. We have to show other people that we love them too. Yes, I, I, well, that's yeah, that's what I'm talking about. God is love. I mean, yeah, <clears throat> they need to see that. Yeah, Amen. So, uh, uh, is there anybody? Going? Go ahead, Peyton. I was gonna say before we close the podcast, can we do the curse breaking? Uh, yeah, uh, and I've got a praise report. Okay, hang on. What, what's the? Uh, is this the curse breaking right here? Uh, I, I've got it. Oh, you got it. Okay. Go ahead, pay, pay, uh, go ahead and uh, okay. do the curse breaking. She's going to do a curse breaking prayer, everyone. All right. So I want to encourage, I felt like I needed, we needed to say this. Those of you that have, that are watching online or listening online, and you heard about hearing Christ, if that's you and you say, yes, I want to be a student of Rabbi Jesus, I want to be a disciple of Christ. Just pray this prayer with us in authority. And also, today, the Lord wants to baptize His people in the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So, uh, everyone say this with authority. Say, Father. Father. Father, Father I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. And confess with my mouth. And confess, confess with, with my, my mouth. That you raised Jesus from the dead. That you raised that Jesus from the Jesus dead. From dead. I now call you my Lord and Savior. I now, I now call, call you my Lord, Lord and Savior. Savior. Forgive all of my sins. Forgive all forgive of my, all sins. my sins. Even as I forgive those. Even as I forgive God those. Who have sinned against me. Who have sinned against me. Satan. Satan. I bind you this day. I bind you this day. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the authority I have in Jesus Christ. By the authority I have in Jesus Christ. I rebuke and destroy. I rebuke and destroy. The power of every ancestral curse. The power of every ancestral curse. Directed against me. Directed against me. I break any and all vows. I break any and all vows. Oaths. Oaths. Blood covenants. Blood covenants. Rituals and ceremonies. Rituals and ceremonies. I renounce sorcery. I renounce sorcery. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. False gods. False gods. False religion. False religion. And all curses of death. All curses of death. Destruction. Destruction. Suicide. Suicide. Murder. Murder. Violence. Violence. Abandonment. Abandonment. Rejection. Rejection. Perversion. Perversion. Infirmity and disease. Infirmity and disease. I declare declare this. I declare this. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In so doing. In so doing. I ask now that you would baptize me. I ask now that you would baptize me. In the Holy Spirit. In the Holy Spirit. And fire. And fire. Sealing our intimate relationship. Sealing our intimate relationship. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to thank everybody for listening to this edition of the Kingdom Advancement Podcast today. And <clears throat> so before we do communion, I want to encourage every one of you who responded to that altar call and took, did curse-breaking prayer and things like that, I want you to reflect, get the elements and I want you to reflect on just the cross of Christ, what he did for us on the cross. And consider just what any sins that God has impressed upon your heart. Go ahead and repent of them. Do whatever it is he asks you to do. But also I want you to say something like, Lord... With your help, I leave this at the cross. Because I reckon myself, I consider myself dead. Because I died with you. I was crucified with you. On that day. And now it is no longer I that lives. It is you. Living in and through me. 
And also, today, just in your own words, I have a question that I would like for you to answer before the Lord. Further, further reflect on what the answer was that you said before you uh, prayed that prayer. <clears throat> and just, this can be a time of, of beginning intimacy with, with God. And uh, a time of teaching, just that the Lord Jesus would be able to teach you personally. Just like he did, I mean, could you imagine, through the Holy Spirit. Just like he did with the 12 disciples. And um, I want to tell you, you know, I, I have been watching, if you have sought deliverance and inner healing, something the Lord had me do. I, I went through a session last Saturday and he told me that he wanted me to begin to watch The Chosen because he would bring further inner healing through that. Now, I don't consider, I consider the show to be historically accurate and biblically, you know, as best as they can, all the while using creative creatives. But the Lord, this is like a tool that He uses, or used me, used to me, to help change my outlook, even, as to our relationship, mine and His relationship, and it's beautiful. It is amazing. So I would just... Th this is just my recommendation. And... Also, if you prayed to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit... Before we do communion, I want to pray with you. And then I'm going to pray in agreement... In my prayer language... With you... Now, I want to ask you this. I mean, I want to tell you this. I want to tell you how I received mine. So, at first, when Pastor Mickey prayed for me. <coughs> excuse me. When he prayed with me, I didn't hear nothing. I didn't hear any syllables or anything. And then I went back into the front room to worship. We were, he's also my grandpa, so we were at home when he prayed for me. And... <coughs> I went back in there and did some worship, and then I started hearing the syllables. And I started hearing the words, get out of the way. For those of you that are students of Dr. Bob Larson's ministry and the way he teaches exorcism and inner healing and all of that, quite frequently you will hear the words, you will, you will hear him talk about get out of the way, which means do not analyze. Do not analyze it. And... So, I felt like the Lord had spoken that. And I said, okay. Now, before I even got prayer, I did some spiritual warfare prayer. And I said, I, I just told the Lord, I was like, Satan is not going to take this from me this time. I went into warfare prayer and worship before that. And so, after that, and then when I heard, get out of the way, I just said, Lord, I resolve with your help. I resolve to push past any analyzing that my mind would do. To push past any analyzing that my mind would do. And did you know, every once in a while, my mind would still analyze. And at first, it was... Deep in analyzing. But I pushed past them. I pushed past it. And I would encourage you when we do this. To do the same thing. Push past. You know do it with the help of the Lord. Do whatever it is you need to do. To push past all analyzing. Okay. So Lord Jesus. As. John the Baptist told the crowds that there is one greater 
than he who will baptize us with the with the Holy Spirit and fire. I ask, Lord Jesus, that you would come and baptize your people with the Holy Spirit and fire. That, Lord, even the the new converts, so to speak, the, the people that just came into the kingdom, Lord, would be immersed, baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I feel led to say this by the Lord. Now that you, speaking to the new converts, now that you have come into the kingdom of God and have made Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior, Savior, and your teacher or rabbi in Jewish terms. Now that you have done that, I would encourage you, but with it, with by the Lord's instruction, I would encourage you to get baptized. This is an outward profession of faith, saying, "I have become a, a new Christian. Uh, I have become a Christian, and I." have died to self and I'm rising up out of that water again and rising up out of that water putting on Christ you know just for lack of better words this is not I mean the baptism is just the outward profession but you have to continually like we talked today you have to continually put on Christ and it's going to be a battle um you know, at first, you know, you may go into a a setting that is different than this and, and be religious and things like that. And, you know, I would encourage you to seek any, to seek Bible-believing church. But more importantly, I would encourage you to ask the Lord which church, sorry about the background noise, which church he wants you to go to. Okay, and I'm going to leave that there. Um, <clears throat> so I want to thank everyone for listening. And God bless, and we'll be back with the communion. All right, so do you have your elements? Okay. I encourage you to read the whole chapter first of all just pause this open your bibles to first corinthians 11 just read the whole chapter it's about communion and sit with the lord um you know just anything that he brings to mind and things like that but i want to pray for you and really you can do that after communion because i gave you some reflection and things like that to do uh before this and i want to pray for you um, whatever it is, you can have bread and water or bread and grape juice or, you know, just whatever you got. And go ahead and lift up the bread. And, Father, we just thank you. We thank you for what you've done for, for sending Jesus Christ into this world. Not to condemn it. Not to point fingers. Not to stone everybody or to you know send fire from heaven and burn the planet up but lord you sent father you sent jesus christ to die on the cross for the whole world so that all may be saved who call upon the name of the lord and it's even written that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That if we confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that you raised him from the dead, that we are saved. Adam backwards, but anyway. I thank you, Lord. For this body, which we partake of, the bread which we break is the bread, is the communion of the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. And you have helped your people to examine themselves and to examine ourselves and 
you know, that we don't partake unworthily. But also, I thank you that today is a day of deliverance, a day of deliverance from demons. That even as they partake, there may be some that get agitated. And... And Lord, today is a day of freedom. We thank you that, Lord Jesus, you died on the cross. You took, you became sin for us. And we, I could even say, although we still have to break them as Christians and, you know, get deliverance and things like that, that you took all our generational curses upon yourself. And Lord, I just thank you for opening blind eyes during this act. Just bear with me, guys. This isn't going to be your average communion. Opening blind eyes. This is a season of deliverance for your people. This is a season where people are going to recognize just how much they need you. They probably knew that they needed you the Holy Spirit to be able to guide them and help them to surrender, but the way they've been taught still keeps them in a measure of bondage, or maybe even a lot of bondage. And I thank you, Lord, that you are working in your people today. This is not about me proving anyone wrong or right or whatever. It's about freedom. And so, Lord, we partake of the bread of which we will say the body of Christ sometimes I get my words all little mixed up and Lord just like in Passover we are crossing over and I thank you for bringing freedom for helping people to be free from sin. A little here, a little there. But helping them to be free from sin. Helping them to put on your nature, Lord Jesus. Put on your mind. Put on the new man. And now... And we do this in remembrance of you. I take the bread. Now, go ahead and lift up the cup. And Lord Jesus, I thank you that we partake of the blood of the new covenant and the cup of the cup of the new covenant in your blood. I thank you, Lord, that you cleanse us from all unrighteousness through this blood. The blood of Abel cries out for justice, but the blood of the new covenant speaks a better word. And that you are uh, you are our high priest. Ever, ever standing before the Father, making intercession for us. And so, you said, do this in remembrance of, of you as often as we do it. And so, Lord, we thank you for... You know, I, I, I feel led to do this. I would encourage you. There there are three different cups. The cup of redemption. I think is the last one. The cup of plagues. And. I 
anyway, just, oh, never mind, I'll do it another time. <laughs> but there's a message out there that I found from uh, Kenneth Copeland that talks about that, but I can't remember it off the top of my head. Um, let me get my notes. Be a minute. Never know what he's gonna have me do. Okay. Those of you that remember it, or maybe even you can just pause and say what are the three different cups that they partook in the Lord's Supper, you know, traditionally. Um, and just go through each one, like a cup of plagues is where you remember your freedom. Oh yeah, sanctification, plagues, and redemption. Sanctification is just um, the Lord, you know, sanctifying. Just uh, go through, and then the plagues is remembering where God brought you from. And then that, that final cup, which was the cup of the new, it's what he took after supper. And just sit with the Lord and think about those before we partake. Pause this and do that. And now, Lord, thank you, Lord, for reminding me of that because I could not remember. Now, Lord, with all of this in mind, we partake of your blood, which the Bible says the the flesh of the life of the flesh is in the blood. So, Lord, we are partaking of your life. So much more than even what could be thought about in the three cups. Lord, we partake of your nature in your life. Who you are. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And your nature. And we thank you, Lord, for bringing us from glory to glory, to glory, to the honor and glory of God our Father. And I pray this in Jesus' name. And we partake of this cup in remembrance of you. Amen. I apologize for how long this, this segment has been. This is not your average communion. Um, this is really the way the Lord has taught me on this. And each person's different. Uh, I like it to be a, a time of reflection, a time of remembering His 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 covenant with us, a time of remembering the atonement. I can really feel the Holy Spirit right now. Um, those of you that have received your prayer language, I would encourage you to keep a habit of doing that. Keep a habit of doing that. And also, you know, and just use it as, as often as you can. Also, I would encourage you to make a habit of doing communion every day. Or as often as you can. Uh, as often as the Lord leads you to. Um, because in this act, and traditionally what the, what the, uh, the Messianic Jews believe is... And, and I think this is what the tradition, like the early church tradition or something has been taught. I, I'm just going off of memory. But anyway, um, they teach that every time you take communion, it's as if you were back there with Jesus taking partaking with the twelve. And so, <laughs> um, that is one of the reasons... Um, well, <laughs> that's all I have to say, but just thank you all very much for listening to this podcast and this video, and I hope it finds you well. God bless.
I want to welcome you to this edition of the Kingdom Advancement Podcast and YouTube channel. If you have just gotten through listening to a video, which of course in this this segment, um, this will be both a a podcast and a segment in a in future videos. It will be for the resources. And so if you are listening to <clears throat> the resources, if you are, have just got through listening to a sermon, I want to thank you for listening. And I would encourage you that are on the podcast to rate the show on YouTube. You can just like, comment, share, subscribe. If you are listening just to the video, you know, just to the uh, video I put up there, then um, if you enjoy this and at the end, just in case I forget, feel free to share, like, comment, and subscribe. <clears throat> and now, this ministry is, my name is Caitlin Cogswell, first of all, who, you know, at first when I did this, when I started this ministry, which really, it, it the vision came, really, I think about around 2020. Uh, but when I started this ministry, I had the vision to just, you know, talk about all kinds of things. And what I would do is do research and, you know, to put things together as best as I could. But now that I've had more of an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit, I don't do anything unless He tells me to do it. I don't just go, you know, oh, I've got an idea, and so I'm going <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go and do it. Um, and so now um, the vision is mainly just to teach. Uh, and like if the Lord leads me to to do the previous vision a little here and a little there, like with health and other things, then we'll do that too. But we are here to get, help you to gain victory in every area of your life. And we are accountable to Dr. Bob Larson's uh, Spiritual Freedom Church and the Do What Jesus Did team when it concerns itself with our, who we, you know, the type of deliverance that we do. And if you want to check out exactly what they do, what Dr. Larson trains us as his students to do, I would encourage you to check out Bob Larson. For those of you that are on pod, on Spotify, you can just type in the Bob Larson podcast. If you, if you would prefer not to go over to YouTube, um, but you'll get so much more on YouTube than you will on the podcast. And, <clears throat> but you can at least get a taste for, well, this is what they do. This is how they cast out demons and things like that. And, but it's so thoroughly done. There's psychology involved, you know, psychological concepts and things. Uh, And also, we are a, a another arm, if you will, this ministry is of Preach Under Them Jesus Church. And I want to go ahead and say this. If you would like to join us in person, we are... Our services are at Tuesday on Tuesdays at six thirty p.m. And unless something changes, I'm usually teaching. Uh, but don't come for me. Come because of the power of, of the Holy Spirit. Because that's what I'm all about is just representing the heart of God. And Pastor Judy and Pastor Mickey also do a very good job of that. And <clears throat> so. <clears throat> and then Sundays we do our services at 1230 and our address is 1601 
I'm sorry I got that wrong. 2101 Northwest 16th. And we're in the North Building. And when you come, if the door is locked, be sure to knock and we'll let you in. So, and also, I forgot to mention this. We uh, are the pastor, yeah, the pastors are Pastor Mickey Banks and Pastor Judy Capshaw. And Storm Ministries, I also, we also partner with Storm Ministries, which is the ministry the Lord had Pastor Mickey found, you know, create um, out of, you know, to, to get a book that he had written in 1990, uh, have a place to put that on, on there, you know, and any further information the Lord gives him. And that, you can contact us through that at Storm Ministries, S T O R M M I N I S T R I E S dot com. Again, that's Storm Ministries, S T O R M M I N I S T R I E S dot com. And there's a place where you can contact us. It's just called Contact, and then also Help Our Cause, that's where you can donate. And And then you can just look around. He's got book. He's got a book there, things like that. Uh, but just mainly. Anyway. <clears throat> uh, also, we have a blog that was started in twenty twenty, and you can go there at www dot kingdomadvance dot family dot blog. And the Lord has told me in the future, be be expectant because I'm going to have a resources page with, I'm thinking, replays of certain rooms that I do on Clubhouse. And, you know, videos, things like that, just different resources that the Lord would have me to put on there. And our phone number is... One four zero five, five zero nine, five three three seven. Again, that's one four zero five five zero nine five three three seven, and I put the one there because I know not everybody uh, lives in this area code. So, and feel free to call us or text us. And if you have, if we don't answer then I would highly encourage you to leave a voicemail and we'll get back with you. Also, you can, I can't remember if I said this, but email us at kingdomadvancement252 at gmail.com. Again, that's kingdomadvancement252 at gmail.com. And our P.O. Box is Preach Unto Them Jesus, P.O. Box 7293, Edmond, Oklahoma, 73013. These are also places that if you would like, if you have any questions, if you're listening to a video that we are, you know, a podcast that, you know, sermon, if you have any questions, these are also places that you can contact us to ask these questions or get deliverance. And I forgot to mention further too, but about Bob Larson, but his website is www.boblarson.com. Org. So, thank you all very much for listening once again. Sorry about all, sorry about all the pauses. And again, I would encourage you, if you enjoyed this podcast, to rate the show. If you enjoyed the and and subscribe if you if you're if you would like to, and then on YouTube, like, comment, share, subscribe for further teachings and further updates. Thank you very much and God bless.